Well, good morning, folks. It is Thursday morning, and we are at June 18th. We are moving right through June, it seems. Um, and we are still in the book of 1 Peter. And we are now, um, if you missed yesterday, we've moved into the second chapter. So we are going to today look at verses 4 to 6 uh, in the second chapter of 1 Peter. So uh, let's uh, start off with a, with a quick prayer as we wait for a few folks to join us this morning. Um, and it looks like it's not going to be too bad a day. Uh, it looks like we might get some rain later on, though, and it might be raining. I'm, I'm afraid it might be rainy for us Sunday, so we need to pray for clear weather on Sunday morning. So while we're waiting for folks to join, let's have a quick prayer, please. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for uh, this l wonderful life that you've blessed us with. We do pray for those that are that are suffering with difficulties. We suffer, pray for those that are dealing with all the unrest that is going on in various communities around the country and across the world, dear Lord. Um, and we just ask that you might uh, bring some peace into those hearts that are agitated and angry and uh, that we might uh, be able to, uh, rather than trying to lash out, that we might try to uh, find some some common ground and to have some, some uh, quiet and, and uh, productive conversations. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we do uh, pray for our farmers and our ranchers as we have been. We pray that the, that everything will work out for the, the, the uh, sale of all their crops and livestock. And I pray for good prices this fall when the farmers do harvest. Continue, pray for continued rains. We thank you for the rains that are promised this week. But Lord, we do ask that perhaps Sunday morning might be a clear morning so we're able to, to uh, worship out on the back lawn again. Lord, each of those that are listening this morning have some other prayer or some other a concern or petition or praise um, that we obviously can't share in this medium, but uh, Lord, uh, let all of us lift those those petitions up to you together at this time. Lord, we pray all this in your love and glory. Amen. Okay, and let's take a look. We're we're we're, we're changing metaphors today. Um, we've been talking at, so far in First Peter. Um, of course, we had the we have got the word and talking about uh, the hope and all of those things and having faith in, in, in God. But it's the, the word, we have the metaphor of the word as being an imperishable seed, um, that, that Jesus, of course, is imperishable. Uh, then we brought in the, con the contrast of the grass with the, the imperishableness of, or the perishableness of the grass and the imperishable bush of Jesus. And then yesterday we switched metaphors and we went to talking about milk. But we brought back that that, that, that spiritual milk uh, is actually the divine wisdom of Jesus. And so today we are going to get rocky. Uh, we're going to turn to stone, I guess, is what we might say. Um, so let's look at 4 to 6 in uh, the second chapter of 1 Peter. And I'm gonna, I am reading this from the NRSV. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Okay. Of course, we have this strange metaphor of a living stone. You know, what? What? How do you have a living stone? Uh, almost brings back to mind. I show my age, right? When I have this memory, um, I remember Star Trek, and there was an episode. And I forget which episode. I'm not that much of a nerd. Where Captain Kirk is is fighting this this thing that's, that's you know made up of rocks and stones. So it's living stone. So strange metaphor or a strange comparison that I would come up with. But that's my mind. It works strangely. Um, but here, Jesus is that living stone. Um, and of course, he's the Alpha and the Omega. Remember the beginning and the end. And I think that plays into this idea of what we're talking about here. Um, though he's been rejected by mortals, he was chosen and he's precious in God's sight. Obviously, he is the Son of God. He is part of the Godhead, obviously precious. Um, but that living stone, that idea of a stone is, you know, a stone gives you security. It gives you um, protection. You know, you build a fortress out of stone, something that can withstand a siege, um, something that, that you, you know, also the, the Israelites would build uh, altars of stone. Mm -hmm. 
great occurrences and memories and, and, and to celebrate things, they would build stone altars. And so this idea of stacking stones is, is very indicative of their culture and other cultures as well. Um, but here we're talking about that this stone is alive and able to, and what more protection could you get than from a living stone, perhaps we would say. But here, um, it's interesting, in the NRSV, it says, come to him a living stone. In the Greek, you don't know whether that should be translated as a or the. Um, I'll be honest, I like the better than a. Uh, I like it better when it says, come to him the or the living stone. Um, I, I, I like that reading better. Um, but the NRSV translates it as a. Uh, a lot of others do translate it as the living stone. It's a little stronger indication of the import of Jesus. Um, but here we're talking about us also being, so us like living stones, let yourselves be built. Like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, part of the body of Christ. Instead of talking about body parts as Paul does, sometimes here we're talking about building up the house of God and that we're stacking these stones. And And I've, I've given sermons before, talking about the interconnectedness of, of each of us uh, and how one builds on the next. You know, um, you you brought into the faith by the actions of all these other stones and these just other stones are based on the building, you know, the cornerstone of Christ. Here, Paul, Paul is putting, or Peter rather, is putting Jesus as the cornerstone where a lot of times we talk about Paul or Peter rather being the cornerstone. But here, Jesus is the cornerstone. And I think that's truly a better metaphor. Um, Jesus, otherwise we'd think of Jesus as the foundation, but here he's the beginning, he's the start of it all. Um, and so as we build with those stones, that metaphor of, you know, you have one stone here, but it's supported by all these other stones that came before, right? As you're building a wall, um, that, that stone you put on top is then in time going to be there as a foundation and, and, and support to those stones that get stacked, continue to be stacked. And, of course, the idea of the Alpha and the Omega, you bring in the idea that Jesus is not only the cornerstone, he's not only the beginning, but he's also the end. He's the capstone at the top. And the capstone, if you remember, when you're building an arch or you're building a dome, you're going to have a large stone at the top, that the weight of that stone supports all of the rest. And that is the idea of the Alpha, the beginning and the end. Jesus is, is holding all of this in place. If you have this idea of as we go through time, that Jesus is always there holding those last stones in place, no matter what. Um, so it's a beautiful way to think of that, I think, of building. Um, because we have to build towards the future. We don't know when the second coming is coming. It could come tomorrow. Might not be a bad thing. Uh, would be a good thing. Um, but we have this idea of we're building. It's a very important job that we're doing, isn't it? Um, but we're building it into a spiritual house. It's not a physical house. It's a spiritual house. So the stones is a metaphor. It's not literal, okay? Um, to be a holy priesthood. Now, that's an interesting thing to there, and we need to look at that. What is the job of the priest? The job of the priest is to do sacrifices. Well, um, the sacrifices, you know, there were, there were five uh, major types of offerings that the Jewish people gave. Most of those dealt with blood. Uh, two of them could not be, well, three could be. Two could, could were supposed to be blood, but could be grain offerings if you're really poor. One was to be a grain offering, um, and that's called the grain offering. And that offering is a voluntary act of worship. It's a recognition of God's goodness and provisions, and it shows one's devotion to God. Now, the thing we have to remember is that those blood sacrifices, who took care of that? Brownie points for those that said Jesus or Christ. That the, so we don't need to worry about the idea of the blood sacrifices at all. Those are that's taken care of. But the grain sacrifice, not that we give grain, but that we give a a act of worship, an act of devotion. And so we are to sacrifice to 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 God. That is part of what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to bring spiritual sacrifices. That's prayer. That's worship. Um, that can be love for one another, love for others of God's creation, caring for God's creation. All those things are, are acts of sacrifice, giving to the greater good um, and, and loving one another. Most important one would be loving one another and acting with each other in a loving manner. And golly gee, we, 
we, we really need that one in the world today because I see these things that are absolutely not love all over the place. I even see people acting out in what they say is love in a very unloving way. And that we need to deal with. Um, and, and we, but we have to realize that, that sometimes love doesn't mean that you just um, let everybody do everything they want either. That's certainly not loving. You need, there has to be discipline as well. So that's another sermon or another talk, or another devotion for another day. We'll deal with that later. Um, our acts of love and our acts of worship are supposed to be acceptable to God through Jesus. Um, for it stands in scripture. See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Now, we'll go on from there tomorrow and talk more about these stones. Um, but it's interesting there. And whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. That's kind of a reversal of what we see in the, in the Old Testament. A lot of times in the Old Testament, you do this, there'll be shame upon you. Um, and we have to hear it's the, the, it's the opposite. If, if you do this, you will not be put to shame. You know, do a good thing. Here, and otherwise, it's you do this bad thing, you get shame, you, you will be shamed. Um, but but this idea of honor and 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 uh, image and all of that and and um, is very important in in that culture. Um, still very important in a lot of cultures around the world. But in the Middle Eastern culture, this 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 act of of, of honor and not being shamed is very was very was very important is very important um and so you want to do things that would that will not only honor god but that is not going to make you look shameful at the same time um so whoever believes in him that act is all it, all i need to not be in shame and that's interesting that's that's that would be a huge burden off your mind wouldn't it if you live in a culture where where things were honor oriented and shame was the worst thing that you could have happen to you if you just believe in him you're not going to put shame that's interesting so it is an interesting metaphor to talking about stones and again we'll talk more we'll have more stony talk tomorrow how's that so with that don't forget it's thursday it's a busy day um we have drive through communion at from, from 5 to 5 30 south side of the church um actually uh, since it's getting warmer, I tend to stand in the shade of the tree, so I'm closer to the south door than I am to the chapel doors nowadays because it's shadier there. Um, so, not quite so hot. So, come on up and uh, the south side of the church uh, from 5 to 5.30 tonight, or tune in tonight for the live stream from the chapel at 7. All right? Thank you very much for watching, and you guys all have a very blessed day, and remember to be a blessing to someone today. We'll see you all later. Bye-bye.